So how can we use our calculator to do compound interest? Easy. At least on the TI uh, Inspire, that one, you go from uh, calculator to the menu to finance to the finance solver. Other calculators have other financial solvers like the TID4, it's called a TVM solver. Uh, I know the Casio also has one as well. But basically, this is the, the main way, at least the TI Inspire does it, it does it this way. So N is the number of payments. This is really important because before in the formula, um, N was the number of years. Watch out very carefully, okay, here, N was the number of years. But in this method right here, the good news is your calculator actually tells you all this. Watch, um, I'll show you how to get to it. So if I go from here, I press menu, and I go to finance, and I go to finance solver. And luckily, it's been so nice as to tell me actually what everything is. So payments, for example, and this is I is nominal interest rate, and the PV is present value, and so on. So at least your calculator will tell you what all these things mean. I just want to talk about them. So just watch out. This here is the number of payments. This is not, this is a place where people make mistakes, okay? It's not number of years, necessarily, unless you're making one payment per year or one compound period. Um, interest rate, okay, that we know. Present value, sure. Payments, this is normally... You're just going to make this zero, at least in the interest of this course right here, because you're not going to make extra payments, okay? You're normally going to just leave that one zero. The key thing here I want to discuss is the present value and the future value. The way your calculator does it, one needs to be negative. So it doesn't matter. So just in case you're you know, doing a two different things right here, and you're trying to solve for, I don't know, the number of payments, or you're trying to solve for the interest rate, um, you have to make one of these negative, or else it'll give you an error. These ones right here, I'll give you another hint, these ones right here, make them the same. Even if you're not making any payments, even if your payments are zero, make this number the same. So in other words, uh, consider this right here then, that will actually tell you sort of what these are, because they're not exactly payments, it's, it's a little bit confusing. Let's maybe go and use this exact example here. Let me just try to uh, take this one right here. I'll take this example that we just did. By the way, I love this things I studied, things on the exam. <laughs> it's hard to see. So I'm going to take this same dumb example, and this time I'm going to use my financial solver. So I'm just going to write down all the different details. So um, I know and the number of payments. Now watch out now. It's not just 30 years. It's 30 years times. Remember this thing here is compounded once a month? If it's done once a month, that means it's done 12 times per year. Right? So that's going to be 360. The interest rate, if we go through those lists, the interest rate, that's going to be 7.1%. So that's going to be fine. I want to have this much in uh, 30 years. So keep in mind, we got to go through the different list, right? So PV, present value, right? We've got payments, we've got future value, and we've got, uh, what was it? PPY and CPY. P Y and C P Y. So let's look at what we want to do here. I just want to show you how easy it is on your calculator. So present value. Do I know uh, how much that is right now? Well, no, that's what I actually want. I want this. Okay, I'll write this down. So I want that. Payments, I'll just make it zero. I'm not adding any extra payments. Future value, I want it to be worth a million. So I'll put that in. Now, I know the compounding periods per year is 12 because it's done monthly. But that means uh, this one here also has to be the same. So even though I'm not making any payments, I make that 12, just like I made that one right there 12 as well. So what you do now is you go onto your calculator and you just, you go where the PV is and you press enter here. What it does, it allows you to solve for any one of these variables given all the other ones. So as long as you know everything else, you fill in the one thing that you, uh, you fill in everything else except for the thing you want. You press enter on that thing that you want. So let me show you what I mean. So let me actually do this on my calculator now, okay? So I'll do this right here. I'll say, all right, let's actually do this. So I've got my uh, N right here. I'll make this, and what's kind of nice, you can actually just go 30 times 12, but to all of a sudden, fine, it's 360, all right? Next, interest rates, that's 7.1%. Next, present value, I don't know. Payments, zero. Future value, I want one million. Uh, payments per year, I want that to be 12. I go down and make that 12. By the way, the next thing that it asks you is like payments at the end. Yes, I want it at the end. So what I do now, I want PV. So I put my cursor on PV. Do you notice it says press enter to calculate? I'll just press enter. 
look what it does. Notice it's at a minus, but don't worry about the minus. Remember, one of them has to be negative. But you notice it's 119,585. So that's why the that's why it's the same here. Right? Remember that was my answer? And it even rounds up to 86, right? So 119,586. 586. So just so you know, that right there is how I got to my present value, right? I just solved for it and it rounds up to 86. So that's how we do this. You might think, well, that's pretty easy, actually, then we're done. And we are kind of done. But what I want to show you, though, is um, something else. Like, what most, unfortunately, it's not in the syllabus that you have to go further, but you should go further because these are kind of dumb examples. This is you just putting in money and not doing anything with it. You just put it in and leave it, which is fine, I guess. But I always think, you know, at school we should always teach students things that are useful for everyday life. So just keep in mind. So extra, it's not necessarily on your exam, but it's like everyday life. This is one of the things I've personally used many, many times. So same example of before, but what if I start with 30000 now and I make payments into the fund each month? Let's look at what I do then. Okay, let's just take a look at what I would do then. So now I'm making payments. Okay, so let's look at this. Uh, we'll do n equals, like I'll do this for each of them, right? I'll do n. Uh, what comes after that? It's um, i, then it's, what is it, pv, pmt, fv, and then we got, uh, you know, the two of them, the payments per year and this compounding per year. Okay, I'm going to make them both like this. In fact, what I'm maybe going to do, I'm just going to, whoa, I'm just going to copy this. I'll just have to do it again. So this one here, I'm going to do the same thing down here because I'm just going to show you how you can very, very, very quickly solve a bunch of different questions. And these are much more interesting to everyday life because they, they actually might be used for you. So these are actual things you might actually have a chance of using. So I just want to explain some of them here. I'm just getting everything set up so I can deal with them quickly. So here, I want to make payments into the fund each month. Now keep in mind, I'm still making my n equal uh, 30 times 12. Right? So same example as before. Right? So this one here is still going to be 360. Interest rate is still going to be 7.1. Present value, well, I'm going to start with 30,000. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to show you what happens here. Payments, now this time I'm going to make payments. Uh, so I actually want to solve for that. I want to solve for payments this time. Um, future value, I still want it to be a million. This is still 12, this is still 12. Just to try to show you how easy this is, once you set it up once, you can make really quick little changes and see what happens. So here, for example, I'm going to make my present value 30,000. Watch out, though, because I'm going to have to make one of them negative. So maybe I'll make this one negative, just so that the calculator doesn't freak out. So what's interesting now is I'm going to solve for payments. So this tells me that, OK, if I start off with only 30,000 now, that's not much, right? But every month, I'm making payments. Do you notice this really helps me? It tells me I need to make payments of 602. So I need my payments per month at just $602. That means, this is actually kind of maybe useful, right? This tells you that, all right, that means if you have, this is explaining something about you know money down. Let's say you want to make a down payment on a house maybe one day. And you're wondering, like, how do I do this? Well, if you start off with some money and you know how much you're supposed to pay off eventually, then what you should do, you can figure out how much you have to pay each month, which is really useful, right? Um, here's something else, too. So this was uh, an example of, um, like, well, you could have, like, car loans, for example. If you want to, you know, borrow money for a, a car or for a house or something like that. So let's say here I want to borrow 200,000 kroners from the bank. This is Danish kroners. It doesn't matter, right? But they charge an annual interest rate of 7%. All right. Uh, it's compounded monthly. OK, so that's 12. Again, that's, it's almost always monthly. So I want my future value to actually be 0. I want the amount of money to be 0 that I'm sort of owing. I want my present value to be 200,000. I want to pay it off in 30 years. So again, it's going to be 30 times 12, which is still 360. And my, I'm curious now, you know, what will be my payments? How much do I have to pay in order to pay this off? So I start off with 200,000. I want it to be worth zero at the end. That's how much I'm owing them. You can think of it that way. I want to owe them zero. I want to have nothing left in that account. 
and you can figure this out. So this is really useful for bank loans. Because banks, boy, do they get their money. So let's see here, so I have seven, let's say this one here, the present value is gonna be 200,000, 200,000. Uh, payments, I don't know that yet, I'm just gonna leave it for now. On my future value, I want it to actually be zero. I'm gonna solve now for payments. Now what does this mean, this 1330? So that's actually how much I'm gonna to have to pay. Keep in mind it's a minus, but ignore it, right? That means I'm gonna to have to 1330.60 or 61, I guess. 1330. All right, I'll round it to 130. Yeah, I'll say 1330. Uh, it depends on how many f digits you want, right? I can say 61, because this one rounds up, that one rounds up. If we're really being careful, it's 0.61 per month. What this tells me is that in order to have this particular bank loan, uh, and this is really useful, right? This happened, this is a true story. My wife and I, we were out at the bank trying to get a bank loan for a house, exactly something like this. We were asking, well, what if we change the interest rate by this? What would happen to the payments? And it's really funny, the guy at the bank is like, well, it's really complicated. I'll have to get back to you a little bit later. It's really complicated math. My poor wife was like, oh no, here he comes. And sure enough, I was like, I'll figure it out because I brought my calculator with me. And it took me a second, of course, because it's really, really fast to do. So this tells you how much you're gonna pay per month. Now here's the interesting part now. Let's actually take a look then at how much this actually costs, by the way. So how much does this really cost you? I was actually curious about that. So what if I take my 1330.61 per month? Remember now, I'm gonna make 360 payments in total, right? Because 12 per year for 30 years. So I'm gonna take that number, 1330.61. So let me go there, okay? 1330.61. I'm going to do that times uh, 12, that times 30, right? This is how much I'm going to pay in total. So watch this care. Look at this. This is amazing. So 479.020. This is kind of nuts. This is total I have to pay. Now you might think, is this a crazy loan? I'm, well, for a house loan, actually, yes, this is quite high. But uh, a lot of banks, if you look at bank loans, it all depends on what they do. Car loans are very often, you know, these crazy numbers like this, sometimes even higher. So look at this. So I have to pay 479,020 just for a 200,000 loan. So you could say, hey, if I subtract 200,000, in other words, the loan, you know, costs me an extra, you know, like an additional, well, let's see, this time minus 200, that's gonna be 279,000. Look at that. To borrow 200,000, it actually cost me an extra 279 just to pay it, which is crazy. So just keep in mind, that's why um, knowing about how this stuff right here works, especially for bank loans, things like that, that could actually help you in everyday life. So that may sound bad, and it kinda is, uh, especially if it's 7%, that's really bad. Like in Denmark, the bank rates are like, 0.1%, so they're very, very low, so it's nothing like this, don't worry. At least if you live in Denmark, it's not, not at the moment. But um, if you're actually investing money though and you're making regular payments, like what I just talked about here, this is how you make your money grow. This is how you can make lots of money. You don't have to start off with a bunch and then let it sit. The smart way to do it is put it into funds that actually pay okay. There's a lot of mutual funds, a lot of index funds. Those pay, you know, very often, you know, 7%. There's lots of different rates. It depends where you live and everything. But let's say it was paying off 7%. That's not that unreasonable. Um, you could actually have a million dollars in your account and not so difficult. If you look at this, 30000 now, you pay 600 every month, which is maybe affordable to you. I don't know. You'll actually have a million you know, by doing almost nothing. So this is why some uh, compound interest, it can be useful, it can also be used against you, right? But it's good to understand it. So although this last part right here was not needed for the course, what you need for the course is when you have no extra payments, okay? But still, I think it's useful for everyday life.